This lecture is about the semiotics of uh, digital photography and uh, it will be uh, quite theoretical and a little bit philosophical, you could say, uh, asking the question uh, what a photograph really is. And uh, there is something called indexicality that uh, you usually connect with photograph. And the indexicality have been eroded. It has been uh, more or less disappeared or, or, or problematized uh, due, due to digital uh, image uh, uh, production because you can change images, manipulate images so very much. And that is what I will talk about. And I will talk about it from the viewpoint of semiotics. And semiotics is a way of, of analyzing and uh, discussing science. And the idea with semiotics is that um, you see an image as if it was a sign. But you can also see an image as a text that is uh, composed of different signs. So let's say, let's look at the tiger in the middle here, for example. Uh, the image of the tiger is a sign representing a tiger. But the, the separate parts of the image, for example, the, the shape of the back of the tiger, or, or actually it's not a tiger, but whatever uh, cat it is. The shape of the ears is also signs and all these signs together form a text that have the message that this is a cat animal. And when you say that an image signifies, uh, or uh, that a sign signifies, you mean that the sign represents something. And when you say representation, you mean that you use a sign to show something or to talk about or refer to something that is not there. Uh, if I want to talk about the cat, I can uh, get hold of a real cat and hold it up to you and say that this cat here is very cute or whatever. But usually it's, it is of course very difficult to, to uh, talk with people if you have to show all the things that you talk to. So instead you represent things. Instead of actually bringing a cat when I talk to you, I have an image of a cat. And the image of the cat is representing the cat. It is used instead of the cat. And the, the spoken language is, of course, representation also, because instead of bringing you a cat, I can just say the word cat. Or if you take an example from, from, uh, from uh, marketing, the logotype, the Coca-Cola logotype, is representing the whole company and the values and the taste of Coca-Cola and so on. And that is of course very difficult to, to bring to people. So instead you, you use the logotype to represent everything that is behind the logotype. And there are different... Uh, a sign can work in different ways. Uh, it's not really a categorization between, b because one sign can be both symbolic, iconic and indexical at the same time. 
you don't have to, so to speak, make up your mind and say that, well, this is a symbolic sign, but it is not iconic. It can be both. But you, you have these different ways in which the sign can function. And that is the symbolic sign, the iconic sign, and the indexical sign. If we start with the symbolic sign, uh, a word like the word cat is an example of a symbolic sign. Uh, you could say that symbolic signs, you have to learn what they mean. Because if you have never seen or heard the word cat, it is impossible to, to understand what it means. You have to learn that the word cat means cat. An iconic sign has the resemblance of what it shows or represents. And uh, the drawing here of the cat is an iconic sign. So you don't really have to learn that uh, the, the, the drawing represents a cat. You can see that it resembles a cat. So it is iconic. Uh, there are examples of images that seem to be only iconic, but it is also symbolic. You have to learn how to read images. Some images are very easy to read, of course, but let's say a thing like motion blur in an image. If you have never seen a photograph and you have never seen motion blur in a photograph, it would probably be a little bit difficult to understand uh, the meaning of the motion blur or a lens flare, for example, or, or film grain. So you have to learn how to read uh, things like that in an image. You have to learn that motion blur means motion. So in that way, a photograph can be, be a photograph is both iconic, usually it rep resembles what it represents, but it can also be partly iconic. But also the photograph is the third alternative here also. It is indexical. And when you say indexical, it means that it has a direct connection to what it represents, a casuality to what it represents. Uh, you could say uh, if, you, if you see footprints in the sand on the beach, those footprints are signs that someone walked there. So they are indexical. And the photograph is indexical because it has a direct connection to what was photographed. Let's say that you put up a camera and you photograph two people. Okay, there are two people in front of the camera. You take the photograph and then you watch the photograph. In the photograph there are two people. And the reason why there is two people in the photograph is that there were two people in front of the camera. If you take away one of the people and take a new photograph, there will be one person in the photograph. So reality kind of rubs off or controls the final image. And that is what you mean with indexicality. And from that comes the idea that you can't lie with images. But uh, you can, of course, lie with images, as we know. But I'll get back to that. Uh, a couple of examples of uh, iconicity, uh, resemblance. This is a, a drawing of, from, that my young child made when he was uh, a couple of years old. You can't see what it represents. And maybe it doesn't represent anything. It is an empty signifier. You can see that it's a drawing, 
but probably it doesn't uh, represent anything. It's an empty sign, you could say. A couple of years later, he did this one, which is supposed to be a rocket. And um, you can see a little bit the shape, you can see the red color and, and things like that. So this is a kind of start to iconicity resemblance. Because a rocket have a little bit of this shape and uh, the rocket exhaust might be red. So there are faint traces of in, uh, iconicity resemblance. And here the typical uh, uh, figure head uh, made by my my child, when he was uh, three and a half or something like that. Uh, this is a perfect example of an iconic drawing. Uh, you can clearly see that it is uh, some kind of human. And it has actually quite good resemblance. It has uh, two arms, two legs, it has feet, it has uh, eyes, mouth. Uh, the position and relationship and somewhat the shape between the, the parts of the image are, are there. And from this one, this level, it's only a matter of, of detail, of quality, like in, like in this image. Here is a full-fledged photographic image, fully iconic. Uh, the image really looks like a gorilla.